Welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral. McNulty's Wild and Woolly Book Corral. Thanks for checking in. Um, we're going to cover three books today that I'm recommending, and I think they're a lot of fun. They're certainly very interesting books that I read a very long time ago. And before we get into that, I want to mention that we have, I have, a lot of new subscribers to the channel. Thank you very much for your interest. My main goal here is twofold. First, I'm having a lot of fun with... Um, a very large literary collection that I have. Um, you know, I enjoy looking at them again, going back and rereading things. It's a lot of fun. And, of course, I cover new books, too. Um, generally, like in the Masonic Lodge, I don't cover politics or religion explicitly. I try to keep my opinion out of it whenever possible. Um, I'm grateful if anybody finds something to read that I recommend. That's really the ultimate goal here, and there have been quite a few booktubers who have recommended books that I've gone and looked at, including recently. I, I mentioned one recently, and uh, uh, I purchased the books and uh, read them, and I really enjoyed them, so I have new authors to, to follow. That's exciting. That's really what this should be all about, and I hope that occasionally people, you know, find something that interests them here by something I'm recommending. I certainly do not expect people to embrace and love every single book, comic book, or magazine that I uh, that I talk about here or recommend. Anyways, today we have three interesting authors that go back a very long way with me. And uh, let's just jump right into it. Newt Hampson, 1859-1952. And today I want to recommend Hunger. Uh, this is, actually, this is an interesting edition of it because this is the 1975 paperback. It's the Robert Bly 1967 translation. Um, Robert Bly by himself is a fascinating author, so this leads you to looking up Robert Bly if you have a chance. Robert Bly was a poet uh, and a scholar, and he was a wonderful poet. Um, I encountered him back in, the, back in the early 70s, and he also wrote a book that I'm quite fond of. It's called Iron John. Iron John is a, uh, a book uh, a, you know, it's a, basically a long essay. It's a nonfiction work. He discusses masculinity in American culture. Um, and what does that mean? How do we achieve that? Iron John is a book that's been uh, mimicked, copied um, in numerous formats by numerous authors, most of whom have an agenda of their own, either a uh, philosophical agenda or a religious agenda. And so they apply... Robert Bly's ideas to their agenda. Uh, the book is that influential. Influential. Um, hopefully I'll be able to speak English properly today. Uh, and that stammer and stutter, which I'm prone to do, I apologize. Uh, anyways, Robert Bly, who translated this edition of Hunger, is a fascinating man unto himself. So please, if you get a chance, look at Iron John, if you're interested in that type of thing, or look at his poetry. He's a wonderful poet. In the meantime... There are other modern translations of Hunger out there that are um, highly regarded. In fact, I don't believe the Robert Bly translation of Hunger is the preferred text any longer. It used to be, obviously, for years. Um, I've never read the other translations translated from Norwegian. Newt Hampson was a Norwegian. Um, and I don't need another one. I, you know, As far as I'm concerned, this did it for me, so this is the one I read. Um, what is this book about? This is, book is about um, an unknown man, a vagrant, uh, and his impoverished life, and, and what poverty is like for him, <clears throat> excuse me, for him in Oslo at the time. And he is self-destructive at once, and on the other hand, he can be chivalric, uh, possessed of chivalry in a way. He is, um, he is foolish at times, too. Uh, it is a fascinating study uh, of a man. Uh, it's a character study. Um, is he every man seeking nourishment? Uh, is that the intention of the author? Um, Newt Hampson, who was, a, by the way, a Nobel Prize winning author, wrote many other books. I have one that I'm really fond of, even more so than this, which is called Journey to the End of the Night. Um, somewhere in this mess of a library, I have that book and a few others. A wonderful, wonderful, interesting writer. Um, but for today, we're just sticking with the, uh, if I can stay on track, we're just sticking with the Robert Bly translation of Hunger. Um, is Hunger 
And I'm asking you, if you read it, is hunger an analogy for different types of hunger, different types of passion? I'm not sure if Newt Hampson meant it that way. Uh, I think that uh, he was more interested in the internal mind um, of of the man, um, very much like Herman Hess, who we'll discuss next. <clears throat> they had a lot in common. And because they had a lot in common... Um, You'll see thematic similarities between all three of the books I'm recommending today, which will bring us to, in a future episode, this will bring us to Henry Miller. Um, Henry Miller was deeply influenced by these authors. Um, just a little bit. This is my literary background kind of manifests itself now and again. I strictly bachelor's degree. I, I did, you know, I started my master's degree years ago, and I, I stopped. I had the grades, but I stopped because writing magazine articles was more exciting to me than doing the the academic work. But I am a product of the academic community, for better or worse. <laughs> you know, not necessarily, uh, I, I'm not, not necessarily a genius here, okay? Uh, I admit my own shortcomings and faults. Um, but in any event, you know, I began my relationship with these books, all three of these books today, by looking at academic research um, in the early 1970s, mid-1970s, I was deeply involved in these books. And so hunger is about this nonconformist. Um, and what do you get from that when you read it? You know, you have to ask yourself a lot of questions when you're reading books that have so many motifs and themes and, and, and analogies inherent in it, whether or not the author intended that to happen. So I think hunger is a good example. I don't believe... Newt Hampson intended that the title and the theme, Hunger, would represent different types of hunger necessarily, but that's certainly an aspect of it if you choose to look at it that way. So when you read the book, how do you view this? Uh, how, do you, how do you take an approach to this type of thing? I think the book continues to fascinate me, even though it's the allegedly flawed Robert Bly, translation from Norwegian. Uh, I like Robert Bly, so again, I'm keeping the book. All right, so there was Hunger. Herman Hess, 1877, 1962. This is probably one of the most popular paperbacks in the 1960s. Um, it was immensely popular during the counterculture of the 1960s, of which I clearly remember, even though as I was a tad young to participate in the finer aspects of the 1960s counterculture, and by the late 60s, I was certainly doing that. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, uh, what do we say about Henry Haller here? Uh, again, Herman Hess, Newt Hampson, and when we get to George Orwell, these are all three authors that have published a, a wide variety of books. I'm just giving you my three favorites to start. They have many, many others. Um, Steppenwolf, um, Herman Hess himself felt the book was misunderstood, uh, and he recommended instead of focusing on the despair and depression to look at the enlightenment that was happening uh, in Harry Holler's search for uh, some type of intellectual uh, recognition, some type of comfort, some type of uh, finding a place in society. He is certainly um, another one of those who is ill-suited for society, highly intellectual. He's looking for um, he's looking for his in individual, the core of his individual self. Uh, all of these books struck a chord with people because of these themes, you know. And I think it's great. I think they're fascinating today. Uh, I I think that hunger might not be quite as uh, relevant to. Uh, modern readers today, I think Steppenwolf is still one that is found um, among college students. I'm not sure about Hunger. Hunger, you should take Hunger with Steppenwolf. Um, uh, Harry Haller's search for spirituality, his intellectual journey, what takes him there? Uh, for Mad Men Only, you'll remember, for those of you who have read it, the, uh, the title of his statement, a book within a book, that we get here. Um, Man has two natures, the spiritual nature and the animalistic nature. Which do you see is predominant? Um, again, we ask ourselves questions when we're reading literature of this level. There's a very, very good reason why these authors 
are as revered as they are because they make us think. Um, that doesn't mean that genre writers don't make us think too. They just do it in a different way. Um, I'm quite fond of this. I Of the three, I read this every couple of years. I pick it up and I just read it straight through. The other two I pick up and I might go back to certain chapters. But Steppenwolf is a book that that chord was, the chord was strumming, you know. Um, and it touched me here, so I still go back to this book. Um, but what's your reaction? If you haven't read it, pick it up. Pick up Steppenwolf and give it a try. Um, this is, I'm just curious, sometimes when I look at these books, uh, which year was this? Um, and this is the, actually this is the uh, 19, one of the 69 edition. It's still in print, so you have to worry. Finally, we come to George Orwell, 1903-1950. One of my favorite. This is a memoir, Down and Out in Paris and London. This book also had a profound effect on Henry Miller. I have an episode about Henry Miller coming up, I don't know, within a month probably. Um, and a memoir about his time. Um, and he touches upon class structure and just a slightly touches upon totalitarianism, which will become a predominant theme in his work, obviously, later on. This is his first full-length book. Uh, and again, it's a non-fiction work. It is, it's been criticized for having some untruth to it. But every memoir, everyone that writes a memoir is going to gild the lily their way, you know, a little bit. So whatever. Um, it's still a fascinating look at working in a restaurant uh, in Paris at the same time, by the way, that Henry Miller was there. Uh, Henry Miller and George Orwell knew each other quite well. And again, you'll... If you read Tropic of Cancer, you'll see elements of Down and Out in Paris and London. Evident in that book, direct evidence right there. Um, for those of you that like to do the comparison contrast type of thing, uh, which is the es essence of critical analysis, compare and contrast. Um, this is one of those books that has a lot of insight into... Uh, human nature, uh, a lot of great astute observations. Um, at a period in time in Paris that is long past, Henry Miller made that point too. What they, what, what Henry Miller and George Orwell and Fitzgerald uh, and, and Hemingway, all of those people in Paris before World War II, what they experienced in Europe at that time was a, a lifestyle and a way of life and a culture that is past. It cannot be replicated. The Nazis. The Nazis came in and changed the world, and the response to the Nazis uh, was even more world-changing than the Nazis themselves because we were ushered into the atomic age. So when you're getting into history, what I recommend with these books is understand the context in, in, in the era in which they were written and what they represent from those eras. That's a very, very good way to take a look at things. People think that... Uh, history doesn't matter. Um, I, I hear it from too many young people. Absolutely, it's not boring at all. I don't find this. I don't find this period in history boring at all. Um, so, anyways, you have three literary classics here. We have *Hunger* by Newt Hampson, and we have *Steppenwolf* by the great Herman Hesse, and one of the great books of all time. And then we have George Orwell, *Down and Out in Paris and London*. These are my picks for this week. If you get a chance, find them, get them on Kindle, do whatever you have to do. Uh, in the meantime, we're very, very close to fishing season. So we'll see what happens then. Stay well, stay happy, feed your brain. Read some books. <laughs>